I am here to kick bubblegum and chew on butt. And I am tired of kicking. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Brickmaker channel and I am here bringing you a brand new video. So if my voice is a little bit raspy, I think I've caught a little bit of a cold, I just got back from holiday. But going on vacation won't stop these weekly uploads. I bring you a video that's been suggested a few times in the comments and something that was a lot of fun to do. An entire playthrough I was able to do well on a plane. So today I will be asking the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only Wild Wasteland items? We start any playthrough off waking up in Dot Mitchell's office and picking the appropriate name of Waste Man. I decide to go for a female character this time, and once I'm on my feet, I go straight over to the gun case and drop every single item that I have right into it. Now when I said with only Wild Wasteland items, I mean with only Wild Wasteland items. Items such as Loyal's Detonator or the Platinum Chip are also completely banned. I make it high endurance and high intelligence, and spec into sound, energy weapon and guns. In terms of my traits, I go for, well, of course, Wild Wasteland, and I also pick Skilled because it's always just the best one. As I'm leaving Doc Mitchell, he gives me more admin to do by giving me more items, and I mail them straight back to him. Now, with all that out of the way, I can show you here that I have absolutely nothing on me right now, so it's time to go pick up my very first item. As many people know, you can pick up the Suave Gambler hat in this fridge, which is a reference to Indiana Jones. Interesting enough, and something that I didn't know, if you're wearing the Suave Gambler hat as a female character, it actually changes its design to this cool little feather kind of cap thing. I cannot believe that there's still things in this game that I'm only figuring out for the first time now. Heading over to Good Spring Source, I decide to speak to Barton Thorne, and he is extremely um, timid today because he sends me off to get some of the most important items that I'm going to have for the start of this playthrough. Johnny Five Ace is here, he's a reference to an old Bethesda design, gives you a little bit of bottle caps but mainly he has a case full of 10mm ammo and a 10mm pistol. Now if I'm going to be totally honest, before I started this video I did watch the Nerbit video on this. For a couple tips and a little bit of inspiration. And according to him, in that box with the 10mm pistol the ammo is usually a lot less. So, as he says in his video, it's fair game. Making my way through the Black Mountain shortcut, I encounter my first main enemy, Radiation, as I will have no way of getting rid of this throughout the playthrough. I do my usual hop, skip and a jump over the fence, take a look at my current setup, and notice that the boulder has already fell down. Something in the open world must have triggered the, the boulder, so yeah. Lucky for me, I can just walk up here like, oh my god! I don't think that's anything to do with the Wild Wasteland Park there. Genuinely the first time I have ever seen two boulders go down the Black Mountain shortcut. I make sure to hit every single marker on the way towards New Vegas. As my ammunition will be in short supply, that means I'll have to be very capable of the quest that I complete. Any XP is good XP. Now did you notice anything there with this tire iron? We'll get back to that later. Because now we're going to go pick up our entire melee arsenal for this playthrough. As I'm sure most of you know, when you enter this building and leave with the Wild Wasteland perk, you get attacked by a group of old women. A reference to a Monty Python sketch, where a bunch of grannies are acting as a gang in London. You'll be attacked by Malefic Mod, Rancorous Roof, and Irate Ida. And it's here where I will refer back to that tire iron. Now as I took all of the items from Malefic Mod, I noticed that I have a tire iron in my inventory. And just being the unassuming young boy that I am, I just assumed I must have picked it up from one of the old ladies. I had not, because here where I took out this freeside thug, I had noticed that I'd accidentally picked it out of the air, like some sort of ma magnificent NBA player catching a basketball mid-flight. It didn't feel right to me, so I thought I'll quickly save the game and reload it to see if I had the tire iron in my inventory before, and I indeed did. What that unfortunately means is that I have to go back into this building before the grannies can attack me and drop off that tire iron. 
God, accidentally failing the run right at the start, guys. However, a quick reload and I can go back to beating up the old ladies with, instead of a tire iron, I will just shoot them with my gun. Malefic Mod is so excited by this, she took a nice superhero pose. And for the second time, I beat up this group of old ladies. Overall, feeling good about myself. I'm now able to take stock of all my new items. The main thing is the two rolling pins in the switchblade. I also picked up a plethora of cigarettes. We must have more. 500 cigarettes. With those cigarettes, I believed it was fair game to be able to sell them and use those caps for anything that I liked. Not like buying ammunition or buying stim packs or anything like that. But potentially giving them over in a quest or buying like a weapon repair, something of that kind of nature. I decided with my improved arsenal now to head over to Prim, in which I thought would be quite an easy task. It's here where I fully realised just how terrible the rolling pin is. The rolling pin is, I don't know how else to say, one of the worst web so bad, genuinely, that I thought this would be a good challenge run. I've never seen, I've never used such a terrible weapon in this game. It was doing no damage. I think when I used the boxing tape, that was more effective. And during this entire attack of Prim, I had to keep running back to the sheriff's office to keep regaining health. Well, these convicts were able to use their fancy stim packs. Like, at this point in the playthrough, I'm just at this point sitting on this airplane thinking, wow, the Temple of a pistol's condition must be really bad if it's performing this poorly. So I give up on the Prim quest, head back to Good Springs, immediately get rid of all the ammunition for the varmint rifle and the rifle itself, so I can complete a quest a little bit more my speed of the Ghost Town gunfight. I take the side of the Good Springs people, and after one huge sneak critical on Joe Cobb, he still takes a couple shots to go down. Now I understand that I don't really have any armour or any strong weapons, but at this point I decided to waste all of my first level and put it into melee weapons. I also thought it'd be important to take the Black Widow perk early, as at this point I needed every advantage possible. I also head over to Trudy and sell all my cigarettes. And I finish off with a nice 59 bottle caps. Should be enough for my plans later on in the playthrough. I hit all the different speech checks that I can. As all XP is good XP at this point in the playthrough. I'm able to do everyone except Chet's. And again, Doc Mitchell likes to give me more admin to do. After speaking to Ringo and speaking to Sunny Smiles, I have a little bit more dynamite to throw away. And get ready to fight the Powder Gangers. I do allow a lot of them to do a lot of the heavy lifting as I have limited ammunition and I realise here that the switchblade is one of my better weapons. With the 100 caps that I'm given by Ringo I head straight over to Chet, buy 100 caps worth of stuff and immediately just drop it. I then totally forget about my adventures in Prim and hover to fight Oliver Swanick. Despite my limited ammunition there was nothing that would stop me taking out Oliver. After saying howdy partner to Aunt Baru and Uncle Owen, I head straight to Camp Certlight to pick up probably the most powerful weapon I can get access to. The three holy frag grenades found in this basement. For anyone who doesn't know, the holy frag grenades are a reference to Monty Python and the Hunt for the Holy Grail. And although the Hunt for the Holy Grail seemed difficult, my goddamn journey in getting these grenades seems even more difficult. I had to load back to an older save so I had enough health to come down here because the golden geckos in here are vicious. Also, the little hitbox when picking up these grenades is a huge pain. So, I go with a more tactical approach of grabbing some ghoul troopers and trying to lead them into the basement as well. My huge brain works an absolute treat as the ghouls distract the geckos long enough so I'm able to run out and get to a point where I'm able to fast travel away. With those holy fire grenades in hand, I decide to head back to Freeside and go talk to the kings. It's here where these 50 caps come in handy because I'm able to give them straight to Pacer. And I start the king's quest line. I take the 200 caps they give you for Oris and head straight over to the Atomic Wrangler and throw all of it onto the ground. I try taking out Oris the old fashioned way and realise that my god Oris is an absolute tank. I mean, seriously guys, at this point, how can I unload 10 sneak shots into the back of his head and it doesn't even move him? 
I decided if I'm going to go any further with this playthrough, I need to start hitting some higher levels. So I hop, skip and jump onto the monorail, get into Vegas and go meet Benny at the tops. That allows me to get up a bunch more levels, so I put it right into my explosives and right into my energy weapons. As I'm about to go pick up my main weapons for this entire playthrough. The goal here is to take out the alien captain and all of his alien troops. As I can get a... Oh god, oh, I'm down again. Like I was saying, I can take them all out and I can get an entire new arsenal of weapons that will all be very powerful and very... Um, right, there's something... Oh god, god damn it. That explains why Prim was so difficult. I must have had that set for a previous challenge. Does it help much so as I'm still getting taken out by all these aliens? And with one perfectly placed holy frag grenade, I can finally finish my sentence of picking up my energy weapon arsenal. What you get here is two tri-beam lasers, a laser pistol, but mainly an alien blaster with many, many alien cells. And with that, I'm able to head over to Oris and, well, you can see what happened. With Oris taken out without a penny spent, I'm able to do the very exciting part of the King's Quest where you've just got to run from person to person, asking them what their opinions are. I'm able to nail this NCR quest the first time because I am just the coolest of people. Generally never touched grass in my entire life. And all this free food I was just given, I threw right back in Elizabeth's face. With that, the king says me to do, you guessed it, more talking. And I'm able to calm down the entire situation. Now the main reason we're doing all this is so we can activate the quest, nothing but a hound dog. The beginning of that quest, you guessed it, involves more running away and talking, mainly to Julie Goddamn Farkas. But with that, I finally have access to Rex, and with running over towards the boomers, I'm able to talk to Rex and activate this wild wasteland. Now this is a reference to, I think, a couple different things. Fallout 2 had a similar quest where you had to go save a kid in a well. I think there's also a, a reference to Lassie about some boy that fell down the well. I've never seen Lassie, but I assume that's it. And when you enter Jimmy's well, there is a mole rat. Without any mole rat meat, which would have been handy because it would have counted as a wild wasteland item. There is a rawhide cowboy hat. There is the Abilene Kid BB gun, 200 BBs, and a Super Stimpak, which is pretty much my only healing item of this entire playthrough. I send Rex right back to the doghouse, and get to trying out this BB gun. Which I'll say right now guys, I was shocked at how effective it is. Generally, really enjoyed using it. Since I was in the area, I decided to head right over to the boomers. And because I can't use Loyal's detonator, I decided that I'm going to just take them all out. When I do head over to Loyal's house, he seemed to have followed me in. And to my surprise, Loyal was actually able to take one shot by the alien blaster straight to the face. And I thought I'll do the effective thing and use the rolling pin to finish him off. Again, even on normal difficulty, my thoughts of the rolling pin can be summed up like this. No, it's not. It's a fucking rolling pin. Who are you, Franny Craddock? What are you going to do with that? You're going to bake me a cake? You're going to sing me a song watch me blow out my fucking candles? Truly a despicable weapon. I decided to go speak to Mr. House to see if I'm able to get into his little back room yet. And unfortunately the terminal is locked. As if you don't have the platinum chip, you can't just get in. No time to think about that though as i got to go speak to Ambassador Crocker. I've already told him that the boomers aren't going to help, so i got to go head back to the Kings and get him to stop the violence in Freeside. With that, I'm able to complete both of Ambassador Crocker's quest and get my way over to the dam. But don't worry, I didn't forget to drop off his 600 caps into a garbage can next to the gunrunners. Now, as I head back to Black Mountain, this is the closest place to Hoover Dam, I decided to use another part of Nerbit's video as he reminded me that you can just complete the crazy crazy quest with your science skill. I also remembered to save Raul, as that's also some more free XP. As I'm nearly at the dam, I decide to pass through Boulder City and go speak to Jessup. Again, I am shocked at the effectiveness of this BB gun. With some more easy XP gathered, I arrive at Hoover Dam and speak to Colonel Moore. It's here where we're going to pretty much speedrun the last of the NCR quests. The first one I started off with was investigating the Omeras. Now, no matter how you do this, you've got to get Kachino's journal. 
So the only way that I found that I could complete it was by attacking them. And they send out their strongest soldier, the Floating Head. Now this Floating Head is so powerful that it distracted me long enough. And with me initially winning this small battle, the Omerters inevitably win the war, as I was thoroughly distracted by the floating hat. Another try and I decided to go with the Alien Blaster. Now in most playthroughs of Fallout New Vegas, any casual playthrough, I always pick up the Alien Blaster. But I'm sure a lot of you guys do the same thing. You never want to use it because the, the ammunition is finite. There's no more ammunition after this. The Fallout Floor Alien Blaster is nice because you could change it to energy cells. But with this game you feel like you just can't because you can't get any more if you run out. So it was quite nice being able to just openly use the Alien Blaster knowing that I'll never really touch this save file again. I made my way over to Ranger Station Bravo as I need to pick up some more ammunition for my energy weapons. After attempting the Nellis way hundreds of times and always getting taken out, I decided to take the Camp Golf approach instead. Now although also difficult, I'm able to reach Ranger Station Bravo with a lot more health. And with that I can finally reach the one. If you guys didn't know, the one is actually a reference to an old Fallout movie that was supposed to be in production. In which it would be revealed that vault were actually the people that started the war. Funnily enough, that is now complete canon with the new Fallout TV show. But moving on from that, I also decided to head over to Red Rock Canyon. Now again, if I wanted to help the cans, that would involve me potentially having to use Carl's journal. So I decided to go the much easier route of just taking them all out. And luckily for taking out the cans, no matter how many times you wipe them out or take out a certain part of the camp, the other camps will just never aggro onto you. I don't know why, it's a strange glitch. I think because at this point the game assumes that you've taken them out of Boulder City, so they actually don't become very aggressive despite your reputation. So I'm actually able to take out most of them with just the BB gun. I head back and let Colonel Moore know all the good news and use my high science skill to finally hack through this terminal. It's time to finally take up Mr. House. And I think this is probably the first time in years that I've used the hacking the terminal method of getting through. Usually if I don't have the platinum chip, I'll just use the VIB key card at Camp Golf, but I can't do that in this playthrough. And now it's time to head over and take up the Brotherhood of Steel. And if there was ever a shown of complete effectiveness of this BB gun, just watch this. Fully in power armor. He was able to be taken out in one shot. What a gun! I was thinking about doing an entire challenge with it, but it might be too powerful. It might be... It might not be a fun enough playthrough to do it with the Abilene BB gun, because it just looks... It's too strong. But not as strong as this alien blaster. Generally, the hardest part of taking up the Brotherhood is just your, your health. Because I don't have any way of healing myself without going to a bed or drinking from a sink, I have to end up leaving the bunker quite a lot to head back to Barton Forms' bed to get more health. I know you guys are thinking I have that super stim pack I could use, but I'd rather save that for the battle at Hoover Dam. It's here where I finally reach my checkpoint of the sink, but get bamboozled with my pants down in the bathroom. This time though I remember to wipe and prepare myself for the Brotherhood soldiers trying to catch me on the toilet. I didn't think this playthrough would be so heavy on VATs, but VATs with such a powerful weapon is the most effective for conserving ammunition. My biggest fear to be honest was getting to the leg without enough ammunition to take him out. Now as most people do I hump this sink until I'm fully healed and continue on with my cleansing of the toaster touchers. The Greater Gropers, the Metal Molesters, the Tech Weirdos. It's time to finish off the Brotherhood of Steel, which in all accounts are pretty cool people, except in Fallout 4 or the Fallout TV show. Then they're kind of weird cultists who have a weird affiliation for strange equipment. So I put them all to the sword. Unfortunately I am unable to use the keycards. So again, I have to hack into this computer. So I can generate the self-destruct of the entire building. Which I probably didn't have to do, I probably could have just finished off the rest of the soldiers with the alien blaster. But in the interest of conserving ammunition, I decided just to blow it up. 
With the Brotherhood defeated, I go back to Colonel Moore and get the quest for protecting the president. Again, I'm unable to use any sort of equipment, so I've got to hope that it's the old Legion sniper that comes out. Which, fortunately it was, and Colonel Moore is able to send me straight to the dam so I can speak to General Lee. I'm actually curious, while I'm attacking the dam here, I've seen a few times people on playthroughs where the Legion actually use something different other than the sniper. But I've never had it. It's never happened in one of my playthroughs. I've only ever had the Legion Sniper on the tower or the engineer runs it with a knife. If you guys know how to trigger different Legion's attempts on the President while you're siding with the NCR, please let me know. I assume it might have something to do with the difficulty of the game. But again, I've never seen it happen. But all that rambling aside, as you can see, I'm getting my butt pummeled on the dam. So unfortunately I have to use my one and only super stim pack so I'm able to reach the coveted activate sync location. This is my holy grail. Generally my character should get two of the four years in prison for what he does to these sinks. Reaching the final part of the dam I'm able to get an NCR group to help me out. Again they don't do much but it helps with a little bit of the ammunition so not too bad. And I finally reach the Legates camp. With just over 50 alien cells left, I'm feeling pretty confident. So much so I decide to waste the last of my laser pistol and get shut of the air for my arrogance. I head back to the site one more time and get ready for the fight with the Legate. I decide to start the fight off with the Holy Fire Grenades. And these are so powerful that I forget that they could even take me out. Second time's a charm and I won't make that mistake again. I made that mistake again. This time I took a couple more steps back and I was able to take out the Legate in one grenade. I used the last of the alien blaster to finish off his Praetorian guard and arrive at the gate where the general nearly blows me up. The general gives me a good pat on the back and I do indeed answer the question, yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas with only Wild Wasteland items. That right there was one of the quickest playthroughs that I've actually ever done. I think because I planned to record this well on a flight, it took a lot more time to plan it out, so I actually had notes that said each step to go through. I even had written down the stats that I'll need for every certain point, so I actually think that was one of the most effective and efficient playthroughs I've ever done. I know other channels have done videos like this, but in those ones they either end up using the platinum chip or something like that, so I wanted to do one where it was generally just no item other than what you can gain from Wild Wasteland. And truth be told, it's one of the easier uh, playthroughs I've ever done. It was Once I got that alien blaster, it was just a, a case of getting to the end. If at any point I failed this challenge, please let me know. I'm a little bit scared because of things at like the tire iron that I might have missed something else. So please leave a comment down below if I did. Again, thank the Nerbert's video. That was a nice little guideline for how to complete this. And thank you to all who got this far in the video. Leave a comment down below saying Raul's moustache to let me know who got here. If you guys didn't know, I have a Discord down below. Please feel free to join. There's always discussions going on in there. Follow me on Twitter as well. I'm going to try and post there more often than I do now. And leave a comment down below and like the video. And let me know if there's any challenge you want to see me do. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.